Yes, we are here, and I'm happy to be back doing this because I'm with my pal Jack Curry, and we're going to talk nothing but music, JC. How you feeling about that? I absolutely love every aspect of this. First of all, you and I get to reunite because we're waiting for that next pregame, postgame that we get to do, and we know that's coming. Everybody stay smart and strong out there. We know those days are coming, but absolutely, they did not, Eric, our producer, did not have to twist my arm when he sent out an email and said, you want to do a show and talk about music? Yes, right in my wheelhouse. You mentioned Reunited, and it feels so good. Peaches and Herb coming at you, hot right out of the gate. So that's Kenny that's Singleton, where... that you're right in Kenny Singleton's <laughs> That's where we start. Hey, I want to let everybody know, so I love music, but Jack loves, loves, loves music. A deep, passionate love of, of tons of genres. Um, his knowledge is incredible, so I want to start it there because I want to know how did it start for you? My brother's a couple years older than me, and he, if you think I know a lot about music or that I have a passion for music, multiply it by two or three, and, and that's where he is. So growing up in the same bedroom in Jersey City, I would hear my brother put the latest album on, and I would be interested. Who was that? Oh, that's Elvis Costello. Then it would be the next album. Who's that? That's The Jam. Okay, I want to listen to those guys. Then it was The Clash or The Ramones. And of course, since we were from New Jersey, you idolized Bruce Springsteen. That was the first concert I ever went to, seeing Springsteen. But I was a, I became a real new wave punk guy, Bob. That's why I mentioned Clash, the Ramones, uh, B-52s, Talking Heads, U2, uh, the Smiths, Depeche Mode, The Cure. Those were the bands that kind of defined my teenage years and into my college years. And to be honest with you, even until today, that, that's the music that I still turn to uh, first when I, when I want something to just sort of soothe me or calm me down. What's the ride home music you've told me about on Sirius XM? What's the channel? Yeah, I listened to First Wave. That would be my first choice on Sirius XM. But then in my eyes, if, if Jack Curry was 22 years old today, and gosh, I wish I were, the channel I would probably be choosing first is Alt Nation because okay. they play the most current alternative music so i'll i'll go to them second there's another uh serious channel called xmu that's kind of your college radio little yeah. under the radar stuff so that's that's what i go for but what's interesting i'm going to turn this around on you is when you and i will go for a a little food pickup yeah. after the pregame bob lorenz looks so buttoned up right and he's got the tie the square is perfect get into his car and what's blasting bob usually Probably some kind of either country or heavy rock. It's heavy rock. The country can be soothing. You're, yeah. you're blowing my ears off sometimes yeah. with, with some sort of scorching, I don't know, incubus or, or <laughs> Alice in Chains, something like that. Yeah, a little five-finger death punch maybe, uh, three days grace. Yeah, that's, that's kind of my workout music, but I like listening to that too when I'm coming into work. Kind of gets me going, gets my juices flowing, so gets me fired up. You know, first of all, I want to – Chuck, say one thing. This shirt was a conscious choice. Want to take you back to that Nirvana grunge in the 90s with the flannel, Seattle. I, I like that. I yeah. almost wore a music T-shirt today, but I wanted to dress up because I knew you'd be dressed up. And I've done these baseball card opening routines with Kevin Sullivan that I just kind of do on Twitter. And I've worn music T-shirts for those. So I, I don't want to overdo the music T-shirts, but I, I like that shirt a lot that you're wearing. Thanks. Hey, so I prepped for this by thinking back to, because I, I haven't really put a lot of thought into my musical roots and everything, but I do remember growing up, went on a, a trip to Minneapolis. It was a family trip, and our cousins had just gotten the Carole King Tapestry cassette, and they just wore that thing out. We listened to that. That was the first cassette that I ever bought when I got back to Southern California. So that's a start. And then I also thought my brother at one point, because we uh, stayed in the same room as well, he bought a Kenwood receiver, the turntable, the whole thing, started listening to Zeppelin, Blue Oyster Cult, Beatles, uh, Kansas, that kind of stuff. And then my sisters had things like Elton John, mm -hmm. the Ronstadt, Bread. So, like, so that's where I think I get my spectrum of music, why I like so many genres. Carol King, let's go back to that. From that cassette, did you ever end up going to see the Broadway play? Beautiful. The Broadway yeah. musical. You saw it though, right? It was terrific. And, and I was pleasantly surprised by how much of her music I knew. I would never have called myself a Carole King fan after that musical 
you can't help but being a fan of her music. You, you didn't realize all of the songs that she had either written or performed. So I, I will see your Carol King with this. This is embarrassing. Well, no, one, part, half of it's embarrassing. First two 45s I ever purchased, it was at a, uh, was it, what is it called? Uh, was it a Sears or a Woolworths? I forget, some, some store I went with my mom. I bought, I bought a Barracuda by Hart. Oh, yeah. you know, I'll stand behind that, I'm, I, that that's, that's strong. And I bought Da Do Ron Ron by Sean Cassidy. <laughs> hey, that was big at the time. That's all that matters. Embarrassing. I, I think I wanted to Im impress some sixth grade or seventh grade girls or something. Right. Say, hey, have you heard the new 45 by Sean Cassidy? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's one of the first concerts you really remember? A few that stand out to me that I went to that I didn't really like think about it at the time. It was just fun to go. I did see Linda Ronstadt in concert back at the Forum in L.A., uh, Eagles, I saw them. <laughs> I mentioned this to you enjoyed the other day. I saw the Knack when they were hot for a cup of coffee with my Sharona. <laughs> so those are three that I saw. What about you? Well, people think I'm lying when I say this. Because I told you earlier, growing up in New Jersey, it's, it's Bruce Springsteen country, and I am a huge fan of Springsteen. My, my musical tastes have also maneuvered in different directions so that there's other styles of music I like. But a buddy in mine... Uh, Michael Wynn Stanley, he and I, you had to put a self-addressed stamped envelope, mail it to Madison Square Garden, and try and get Bruce Springsteen tickets. Now, what are the odds that yeah. the two of us would, we both got tickets to see Springsteen. So the first concert I ever saw, not only was it a Springsteen show, but I got fourth row orchestra seats. Unbelievable. So I guess I was 15 years old, saw Springsteen at Madison Square Garden. And I was even mature enough at that point to know who he was and who I believed that he was becoming and saying, you're starting off at a pretty high level here. You're supposed yeah. to go see somebody in a park somewhere that, that maybe <laughs> had one hit or something like that. So that, that Springsteen uh, show really stands out. And then you know me, I, I love The Clash. They, they've been my favorite band forever. I, I think they were a band that spoke to people. I think that their music had a purpose. And... Um, Went with my brother to see The Clash once, and towards the end of the show, being rambunctious, we climbed onto the stage. Now, what? the band was already fleeing. They, they were already done with their encore, so at that point, the bouncers didn't care. There was really nothing to steal or anything. But I always like to tell people in 1981 at Bonds Casino was the name of the place. It's still there on 45th Street. Uh, I was able to climb on the same stage that the Clash performed on. I do want to get back to the Springsteen, because first ever at 15, and you were front row, you were in the, the belly of the beast right there. That had to be surreal for you. Like, you'd never been in that kind of environment before, right? You no, know, it, it was phenomenal, and you're right. We were, we were kids. It was my buddy, him, his brother, and his sister. His sister was a little older, so at least we had somebody who was mature there, but People, because of our seats, people were trying to move in and move down a little and like, wait, that's my seat. So, right, you have to learn a little bit about some toughness and a little bit of uh, concert etiquette and all that. So, yeah, we absolutely learned that. And I still have emblazoned in my mind being so close to Springsteen, especially when he kind of toned it down and did something a little soft or did a ballad or something like that. And one time at spring training, you and I drove over to downtown Tampa and we saw... We saw Bruce Springsteen, and that, that was the first time I did, and only time I've ever seen him. Probably because he does this every time. I'm sure it was a three-plus hour show, yeah. and we had a lot of fun that night. That's right. That was awesome. That, that was great. So I'm thinking back to eras, and obviously I think because when I was in high school, it was that late 70s, 80s. I love 80s music, and I know you love so much. Can you pin down one era that you love? Would it yeah, be that time of like the clash in the 70s and 80s? I, I'm a, I consider The Clash, they crept into the 80s, they started in the 70s, but I mean, the 80s are, are most of my teenage years, and I know there are some music historians who, who rip on the 80s, but no, I, I would say that I'm an 80s guy for sure, and I mean, I think back to U2, the Ramones, I've, I've mentioned The Clash, Talking Heads, I mean, to me, there are bands like that that were incredibly impactful at that time. Uh, you know about my radio DJ history for about a seven or eight month period. Won't mention my on-air name. Uh, but I wrote down just a couple names as we wrap this up, Jack. Just a couple songs. Uh, Heart and Soul to Pow. I've told nice. you about that. I've played that. Don't Disturb This Groove by The System. <laughs> get Out of My Dreams, Get Into My Car, Billy Ocean. And the one I've never mentioned to you, because I think all those other ones are funny, 
but he was like iconic from that time. Never going to give you up, Rick Astley. Oh, How could I have forgotten that one? That is fantastic. And then the video, you got to watch the video of Rick Astley and then how then people started to Rick roll people. Do you know what that is? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Go on YouTube and see somebody getting Rick rolled. You, you think you're about to watch something else and then all of a sudden you get Rick Astley. And I'm not going to do it, but he had the, the raincoat, the trench coat on, the pompadour. Oh, this is great. I love this. Jack, by the way, speaking of that, if as this continues now and we have more social distancing and Places aren't open. You and I are going to have those pompadours in terms of haircuts. But we don't, yeah, it's take it down right now. I've got a lot of gel. We've got a lot of gel holding this down right now. <laughs> yeah, we're not leaving the house. So unless just Pamela has, has some shears, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's going to stay the way it is. <laughs> All right, Jack, good seeing you. Good talking to you, as always. We'll talk again soon. Let's we'll hope we can do the music thing again soon, but we have so many topics to cover. I just want to remind all our friends out there, keep doing what you're doing, the social distancing seems to be working pretty well. Let's get over that hump and flatten that curve. Keep washing your hands, doing everything that you're doing. And Jack, I know even when you take daily runs, you're out there doing the right thing and staying safe. Absolutely. I concur with everything that Bob just said. And one little note, if you're getting bored, dig up your favorite musicians, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I would almost guarantee you that he or she might be doing a live stream of music. That's one thing that has helped carry me through this quarantine period. How many musicians who are out there performing and it's online and it's there for you to find it. And that is just one thing to help you uh, get through all of this. And one last thing, if even if you're not bored, we're doing Twitter takeovers. Mm -hmm. John Flaherty did one on Yes Network this morning, tonight at seven o'clock. David Cohn and our boss, John J. Filippelli, are gonna talk about 1996 Game 6 World Series, Jack. That should be awesome. I was uh, following Flash's tweets this uh, morning, and they were great because it was Flash. It was just him. You could tell you and I worked with him so much that you could just see him giving your – some of it was critical, some of it was deadpan, some of it was rooting for his team, and absolutely the, uh, the Coney and Flip one should be uh, terrific tonight too. All right, check that out, guys, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.